Hi everyone, I'm Cypher and welcome back to the channel. In the last video we looked at the IP5209, but things didn't go quite as planned. This time I've been testing the IP5306 and not only did I get much better results, I also uncovered some really interesting features I wasn't expecting. Plus I'll show you the new shield design I've been working on, the challenges I ran into and how I solved them. Let's start with the IP5306. In the last video I tested the IP5209, but unfortunately we didn't get the result we were hoping for. Based on my experience with this new IC, I think I now understand what the issue might have been. This time with the IP5306, things went much better. At the output, we got a steady 5V which we then fed into the LF33 regulator to a step down to 3.3V along with the powering other components that need 5V and the charging indicator works perfectly fine using a tactile switch I can turn the power on but for some reason unlike the module based result I had before I can't turn it off while digging for this issue I discover something interesting Apparently, the IP5306 also supports I2C communication. Someone actually mentioned this in the comments of the last video, and sure enough, if you check the datasheet, it does list I2C, but with almost no detail. It turns out that with the pin 3 and 4, which are normally connected to the LEDs, we can actually use them for I2C. And not just for reading the battery level. You can also monitor other useful info like whether the device is charging or not. I also designed a new shield. Just like the previous version, this one supports 3 NR24 modules, a CC1101 and IRLD. Of course, we've also got the antennas and a pin header included. At this point, two things are bothering me. First, the antennas. There are just too many of them. Unfortunately, we really need all of them, so I don't have much of a choice there. So if you have any suggestion on how to arrange them so they look cleaner, or if you know of a better solution, drop a comment. And second, the pin header. While I managed to reduce the overall size of the board, in this redesign, the thickness is also still an issue because of the pin headers. My solution is to switch to pogo pin headers. These are compact, spring-loaded connectors that will make the shield thinner since I only need them on one side of the board. On top of that, they make attaching and deattaching the shield much easier. For measuring the battery level, I first considered using a simple voltage divider that works fine for getting a rough estimate of the battery level, but since the IP5306 support I2C and can provide not only the battery level but also other useful information, we really have two options here. I tested both methods and they both work. The only drawback is that sometimes the I2C solution interrupts the flow of the code. I believe this can be solved with cleaner, more optimized code, so I'll be working on that too. This video is sponsored by NextPCB. If you're working on a custom hardware project, NextPCB is a solid choice for PCB manufacturing. They offer high quality boards, fast production times, and support for everything from simple prototype to advanced multi-layer designs. Check them out through the link in the description and thanks for the NextPCB for supporting the channel. When I was testing the new shield and checking if all the features were working correctly, I ran into a big problem. In the previous design, if the shield wasn't connected and you tried to open a feature like the Subgigar's Ripley attack, nothing would happen. But now with this new version, whenever I tried running any Subgigar's feature, whether the shield was connected or not, the ESP would just reboot itself. I struggled with this issue for a few days, but after some digging and few fixes, I finally solved it. The problems turned out to be few things. First, TFT ESPI and CC1101 library conflict. These two libraries don't play nicely together. By default, TFT ESPI doesn't enable hardware SPI, so I had to enable it manually. 
And second problem, unlike the previous design, I now had to manually set the SPI pins for the CC1101 in the code, which wasn't the case in the previous design because I just had to set the pins in the library files. And the last problem was shared pins between CC1101 and NRF24. In the older design, I reused some pins for both CC1101 and NRF24. That wasn't a problem before since they weren't used at the same time. But in this new version, I forgot to remove the code that changed the pin states when selecting the subcards feature. That mistake caused a major conflict. After fixing these issues, everything started working normally again. So that's the progress so far with the IP5306 and new shield. It's been a mix of all small wins and tricky problems, but step by step, it's coming together. I'm curious to hear your thoughts, especially on the antenna arrangement and the Poco pin headers. If you've got ideas, drop them in the comments.